everybody this is pun the frugal streamer with an update for you OVS studio users release 24 just come out big update with a lot of neat little features that we want to talk about and i think you will like a lot so let's go ahead and get into the video but first meet cleo cleo is an ai that acts as your personal financial assistant cleo combines data from your cards saving and checking accounts and even your paypal into one platform Clio tracks monthly spending habits, creates a budget, and will inform you on any spending that takes place from anyone. Clio is a secure system with bank level 256 bit protection. No private data is stored on Clio servers and all information is randomized and anonymized. You can download Clio for free on both iOS and Android, as well as manage your data on the Meet Clio website. Join the 1.7 million Clio users and join the new way to manage your finances. Meet the new way of banking, Meet Clio. The Meet Clio download link is in the description below. So the first thing that we'll go through is customizable browser docs. It's a new feature. As you can see here, I have updated my OBS studio with a few of them. I've got my Twitter here to the left so if when i go live i can actually tweet out without having to change screen i've got my uh, uh chat here from mixer which is uh actually restreams uh browser chat that i've linked my mixer account to and then i've got um the actual broadcast page here for my dashboard from mixer that i can go and actually update my stream and all that without having to go to another website which is really nice so it's easy to get into all you need to do is go into view go to docs and we have custom browser docs here now and you can see here i've named um, each of these different urls and then all you need to do is just copy and paste the url into this url area here and hit, hit apply and it'll be there uh, simple easy to do and you can move these around you can put these anywhere you want um, which is really nice um, i like docking you know I thought it was really nice to be able to dock it there and uh, have these. And then, of course, you know, you know that you can lock this UI also so that they won't move. Um, but, yeah, so that's the first feature. The next feature is something that a lot of people that have dropped frames a lot, they will appreciate. So what we can do now is we can now have dynamic bit rate. So let's go into OBS and we will go to settings. And go down to advanced and down here at the bottom now where you're under this network area you have dynamically changed bit rate to manage congestion and it's in beta so you click that and apply it and then what that's going to do is that's going to change your bit rate if you get a lot of congestion on your internet and you have a slowdown OBS will then adjust the bit rate accordingly instead of getting drop frames uh, this may introduce some la some input lag, uh, but it's going to try to keep you from dropping frames so that instead of losing frames and you have this buffering going on, you just lose quality in your stream until you get your internet speed back up, which is actually really nice because your viewers will then at least know that uh, they're not having issues on their end. One more thing to note about the dynamic bit rate is that it's only usable right now on RTMP servers. So if you're using Mixer FTL, then you have to switch to RTMP to be able to take advantage of dynamic bit rate. The next thing is now, instead of just starting and stopping a recording, we can now pause our recording. Uh, it's very simple. So if you go to the start recording button, you will now get a little pause button to the side. Notice the color that it is right now. If I click it to pause it, notice that it highlights so that it matches the color of stop recording. And then if you want to start it again, you just press it and then the color goes back to the darker color. Now, some things you need to know about this uh, recording is that if you're using the same as stream encoder setting under your recording output, then this will not work. It will not be available. You have to use uh, dedicated settings for record before you will have the pause function. All right, another cool little feature that they've added with OBS Studio 24 is the ability to use a box to choose multiple sources within a scene. So simple do, I have two sources here. I have my intermission scene and then I've added a browser for OBS uh, 
that shows OBS's website. Simply click outside of the uh, scene area and then drag a box and it will select multiple and then you can move them all at one time. Uh, pretty neat little feature that uh, I think is pretty useful, uh, especially if you use text files that uh, for social media and things like that with uh, social media icons. You can put a little box around all those and select those at once. It's just another way of being able to select multiple things at one time. One last change that they've added that I want to show you inside of OBS Studio is the ability to re-enable your preview from a button. So if you disable the preview, you now have this button here they've added that is brand new that you could just click to re-enable. You know, and it's a nice little feature. Didn't have it before, and it was it was kind of a little bit more of a pain in the butt to uh, re-enable your preview. But now they've done like what Streamlabs OBS has done by just adding a button to the middle of the screen, which is really nice. All right, so there are a few more changes that they've added. I'm not really going to show you in OBS uh, because they're rel relatively small, and I could just tell you and you would get the idea. But they've One of the things they've done, and this will help you if you use stingers, that sort of thing, for your scenes, uh, is that they've fixed the hardware acceleration support, so now they'll decode media files properly when using the media source. Uh, they've also added channel widgets for Restream I.O. service integration, They've added a shader area in the downscale shade, uh, downscale filters under video settings. They've added a script to pause recording when a, speci when a specific scene is active. And that's really all of the changes. There's a couple fixes that they've done, including some dependencies on, on Windows using uh, they've optimized basically what they've done is they've optimized x264 so that you should actually see a little bit of a performance gain if you use that in code with but it's really nice um and i think that's really about it there are a number of optimizations and performance improvements uh there is a number of improvements if you use quick sync which is nice uh They've changed the default recording format to MKV and instead of FLV, which is nice because not really many people are going to be using FLV because it doesn't do multi-track audio. And MKV or MP4, really the two formats that most people are going to use. And more you start, and you're starting to see more people go over to MKV because you have the auto remux setting in OBS where you can just automatically remux the MKV to MP4 when you're done recording, which is really nice. Also, with recording and multi-track audio, since we were just talking about it, is that the, now if you don't have any track selected by default, any recording will go straight to track one, even if you don't have it selected. So that's a nice little feature. They also give you a little uh, red warning underneath the multi-track selection options to tell you that you need to select at least one track. But if you do forget, they've got your back. That's it. A nice little update for OBS Studio version 24. I, I love the features that they've added, and especially the custom dockable browser source is just beautiful. Uh, and, you know, so you can really customize OBS pretty much any way you want now, which is nice. Uh, so anyway, I do appreciate everybody watching. If this video was helpful to you, please hit that like. I do need the likes, people, so please, it does help out a lot. I appreciate it. But other than that, make sure you hit me up on my social media, at frugal underscore screamer or on my uh, gaming side at TFS underscore pun. You can find me on Mixer at Mixer.com forward slash TFS underscore pun if you want to come check me out when I'm live streaming. But other than that, I do appreciate it. Also, I've also got my website published. It's called thefrugalstreamer.live. So go check that out if you like it. It's got my live stream there. It's got all my videos there. Uh, so you get, it's a one-stop shop for the Frugal Streamer. Go check it out. I think you'll like it. And also... If you want to support me in other ways, I do now have Patreon, and I do have a couple of supporters now, so I do a thank you for that. Uh, if you want to become a Patreon partner, make sure you check out my website at patreon.com forward slash the frugal streamer. And there you'll find all of the perks that you will get from being a, a Patreon supporter, which is actually a pretty great deal. Uh, if you go read uh, all the different things that you could get. So anyway, guys, thanks you for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great weekend. We'll see you later.